Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 16th. This first article was sent from my friend Tim P. Thank you for this article. This is about the Tesla Model S. This was a blog that was posted on the Tesla website by a doctor, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but as usual, there'll be links to all the articles down below. This was an accident with the Tesla Model S. A truck was passing over a large metal object. He said it was a three-pronged trailer hitch, and so he wasn't able to swerve to avoid it in the car. The Tesla S model took a huge hit underneath the chassis, and he drove on a little ways uh, farther and noticed that the car was starting to give him warnings that um, the car was not going to be able to possibly restart, and then later it gave him a, a warning to actually pull over and stop because the vehicle had a more serious problem. Well, it ended up... Um, as he stopped the car, smoke started coming out from under it, and by the time he'd gotten his uh, personal belongings out and moved away from the car, the car actually caught on fire, and uh, when the uh, fire department arrived, there was flames coming out, and evidently, according to him in the article, if you read this, uh, none of the flames, even with the wait time of the fire department arriving and everything, none of the flames actually ever reached into the cabin, so had he somehow been unconscious or something like that and not been able to get out of the car, uh, he would not have been harmed. He was even able to retrieve some papers later on after the fire was put out inside the cabin itself, so... Uh, expensive car and I realize nobody probably on a normal income uh, he was a medical doctor so he could afford a Tesla S but um, pretty good notice to the safety of it the only part of the article that I would disagree with is uh, he kind of claimed that the Tesla chassis underneath somehow is uh, almost like armor plated or something like that I think probably your average car even could probably suffer an impact of a metal object like that and still at least uh, not have it penetrate into the cabin but other than that the rest of the article is pretty good I have to pardon my cat's kind of joining in on the show, as she usually does. Um, next up, I want to talk a little bit about my friend Navy Thomas. If you haven't been following his channel, and I'll give you a link down below, he is working right now and even communicating with the Verb, the Garmin Verb people, the new action camera that's on there. Um, if you're not familiar with it or haven't uh, learned anything about it yet, uh, keep up with him because um, not only does he have one now, they shipped it to him and he's testing it out and some of the various features, especially now, he's running tests on the software part of it, but he's actually in communication with one of the Verb techs um, themselves and talking about um, back and forth. I guess he's kind of like being their um, product tester for them. So if you want to learn about that, uh, I, I always like the fact that more cameras are in competition. It's not just a GoPro, although they're the lead dog right now, but we have some other action cameras. And if you didn't remember, I also told you guys about the fact that Contour is back in business now too. Somebody did pick up the, the brand name, the stock, the technology. Um, so if you uh, want another competition and one thing I do like about the contour cameras, they were the first ones to come out with that big, huge slide switch, too, so that if you were an action vlogger and you had some thick gloves or something like that, you could actually reach up and switch it on and off. Um, that was their first innovation that I really liked, so I'm glad to have contour back in the mix, too. But, yeah, if you want uh, a little bit of updates on our latest action camera, for uh, especially for us moto vloggers, check out Navy Thomas's uh, constant updates on the Verb. Next up, this is from 1954 Shadow. Thank you for sending this in. This is about um, a new 3D printed car. This car is mostly the body itself. The body and chassis, I believe, is mostly printed on uh, 3D, and they're going to reenact something that a lot of us car enthusiasts are aware about. About back in 1903, there was a physician, and his name was Horatio Nelson. He uh, was a car enthusiast also, and he uh, would get into arguments with his neighbor, and his neighbor claimed that uh, cars were not ready to go cross-country, and he made him a $50 bet. Well, based on this $50 bet, uh, doctor, the doctor, his mechanic, and even a, he brought along a dog, and uh, 800 gallons of fuel later, he crossed all the way from one coast of the country to the other just to win the $50 bet. Well, um, these guys are going to actually take this on. These guys in this uh, car that people tease them about called the lozenge car or the jelly bean car. Um, check it out. This is from Popular Mechanics. They're going to actually uh, try to recreate this trip as much as possible. It's going to be two guys, and they're even going to bring a, a dog along, too. And they're claiming with this uh, new vehicle, it's a three-wheel vehicle, too, besides in a, kind of an aerodynamic shape. That's what they want to do. They wanted to make it mostly aerodynamic first and get the shape down and then worry about styling later. Well, they're going to they're gonna cross the country with 10 gallons worth of gas. They say they're going to do that. It's going to happen two years from now, so it's going to be an ongoing story. But, uh, yeah, I'll be, uh, as you can see, I've been putting pictures up here of it and what it looks like. It's uh, kind of a cool idea, and I hope they do succeed. They're going to travel all the way across country and then all the way back. 
And next, this is from my buddy Dave in Moose Jaw, Canada. Thank you for this article. This is about an Israeli firm that's got a new type of uh, cryo-freeze to kill tumors. They've actually tested it out, and it's FDA-approved to be able to uh, do uh, breast tumors for women. And what it does is the needle itself, a little micro needle, um, goes inside um, just under low. You can do this operation just under local anesthetic in an office. It takes about 15 minutes, so it's just a, a very, very small incision. They go inside with this cryo needle and then inject liquid nitrogen to freeze the tumor until it's completely encapsulated and frozen. And then they just leave it in place and let the body uh, absorb the dead cells. So uh, very little cosmetic damage, very little scarring or anything like that. And they're, what they're going to try to do in the future is get it approved to be able to use the same cryogenic freezing on tumors for lung cancer. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, some new innovations and stuff like that, especially uh, microsurgery I like, a lot less invasive, no more cutting people open and in fact sub subjecting them to infections and stuff like that. Um, pretty cool. I like the idea. And this last one, um, I've actually gotten back in contact with uh, this guy named, Fa this engineer named Faisal Ali. I did an article back in May on the TDD report about Volo lights. Uh, they were the kind of lights that when you did heavy braking or heavy deceleration, they would actually come on. I don't know if some of you guys do as uh, motorcycle drivers, but I certainly do this. If I'm going to do some heavy decelerating, even if I don't really intend to hit the brakes, if I'm just decelerating fairly quickly, I do tend to tap on my brakes to let drivers behind me know because I'm always concerned, especially if somebody is following me closely or it's a large truck following me, I am always concerned about um, them bashing into the end of me and killing me. So... Uh, one thing these Volo lights do is he's going to, uh, well, he, he already has it actually uh, ready to go. I guess in December they're going to be at a, a, a show in California, and right now he's gearing up to produce these for the backers. This was a uh, Kickstarter project, so those people that backed him from the start and the development are going to get some of the first ones of these Volo lights. Uh, the, there's two models of it. One is a little module and I guess those people that invested about $70 are going to get the little module kind of deal that you can wire into your brake lights but if you invested $10 additional as one of the first investors when this was uh, being developed you'll get the whole license plate bracket with the LED lights and everything. Um, I've been talking to him and discussing about this and in communication so I'm hoping once he gets the backers taken care of and starts it to, for sales to the public I'm going to actually ask him if I can get a possible test model of it to try out myself and uh, possibly even you know I'll, I'll try it out for a little bit but like everything else I don't and my TDD report if I get anything for free and I don't pay for it fully myself I'm not going to keep it so if I actually get a test model of this to test what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just uh, do some kind of giveaway or something like that and give it to one of my listeners and one of my viewers so we'll see what comes of this but uh, he's actually been in communication with me so I thought that was cool for some reason he went and looked up my TDD report in May and so we'll see what goes from that but a really great idea too uh, he's uh, got some algorithms going in the module it must be some kind of uh, besides the sensors, it must be some kind of computer uh, control too besides, and he wants to make it sensitive enough to where it works for the safety purposes, but it doesn't come on so often that people tend to ignore it. So hopefully that will work out. Thank you guys so much for all the articles you've been sending in too. I could have made this report probably about 15, 20 minutes long because of all the stuff I've been sending, especially this last week. So I've got plenty of material even for next week's show, but I don't want to discourage you guys from sending stuff in because that's what makes this show fun. And I always would rather have extra material than not have enough. So thank you and keep on sending stuff. Many times, even if I don't use an exact link people send in, it usually leads me to side links. In fact, last week one of the stories that I got was a side link that uh, was to another article that 1954 Shadow had sent me in that I didn't use, but I used a side link on another story to find it. So please keep sending in the stuff. I really appreciate it so much. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.